Your courses should not be lesson after lesson of just video content where your students just consuming all of the content. Rather, start to build lessons that are interactive lessons. Today, we're going to look at two different types of interactive lessons that you can build into Google Slides and then embed into your course. So super easy, let's take a look. Before we do, my name is Kat Sobello from The Stellar Way. I am an instructional designer here to help you design, create and launch your online course. Each week there's a new video here on YouTube channel, so don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button so you are notified of course creation videos. Let's take a look at the two different types of interactions that we're going to play around with today. Both of these you can design in Google Slides. You can also do them in any type of tool that you want to use. So I build these interactions in different authoring tools so that my clients can launch them into their platforms. You can do this in Thinkific where you can launch SCORM content. So I would build this in a SCORM authoring tool, but you can also put it into a Google Slide. And in that Google Slide, you can then embed that into your courses. We're not going to look at how you can embed that into your courses today. We'll look at that another time. I want to show you how you can develop these in Google. So let's have a look at the first example. This first example is a way that I've displayed different content types that you can use when uh, you're designing courses. So this is really useful for you, but for my students who are learning to build courses, and this is so I can show them all the different types of content that they can use. But rather than just listing it out in a long list or a long table or in a PDF document, I have created a very basic interaction. And so the first interaction we're looking at is a really basic behavioral interaction that's not really using any of their cognitive skills. It's just a click and reveal uh, example. So very, very basic. And here you can see all of my um, all of my slides. So there's how many other there's 22 different slides. Now, the student might not see all of those slides. What we've done instead, if I just click present on this one, what we've done instead is that there are buttons here that the student can click to start. And then there's the three main types of lessons. So these are divided into three sections and they can click on whatever they want to. So this is really useful in putting the ownership back on the student. What do they want to learn? So let's say they want to learn more about videos. We can then come into video lessons. So you can read a little bit about an example of a video lesson and then see some examples. Now, if you're interested in learning about animation, you can then go in and read more about animations. At each point, you can return back home. I guess this is bringing you back to the previous slide. You can set this up however you wish. So as you can see here, I've got every single slide listed out. So if someone was to go through these slides, they will go through them in order of how I've built them, but they don't have to do it that way. Now, building this inside Google, Google Slides specifically is super easy. The first thing you need to do is design all of your slides, right? Get them all designed. Now, what I've done is I've used shapes here, shapes with text inside it. Now, within a shape, what you can do, if I just jump here so you can see, click for examples, in this shape, all I've done, this is in Spanish, but all I've done is I've clicked on this link here. So. It is to create a link. You can also do this on my computer. You can do control K in a Mac. You can do command K. So let me show you this link that I do have here. It's pulling to slide four. Okay, which is this slide four here. Now, again, this is all in Spanish. So if I was to show you here, this is slide five. So if I just go to make a different one, I can click on these different ones here to go to the next slide or the previous slide, or I can type in the slide that I want to show. So if I select show 15, then it will push me to 15. So if I just show you this one here and I click on this, then I go to a completely different slide, which is slide 15. So that's a very basic set up to do. All that's doing is clicking and revealing content. But what you are doing is you're providing the student 
with the, I guess, ownership of how they would like to move through that content. So rather than saying, here's a whole PDF document with every single piece of information, you're giving them the responsibility to learn what they want to learn. Now, this is really useful when they that they don't have to learn a particular piece of content. It's not vital for their courses. Um, for example, in this, in this course that I just showed you or this lesson, students might not want to do audio lessons or they might not be doing video lessons. So they only drill in into the area that they want to do. Okay, so that is the very basic non-cognitive behavioral um, click and reveal type of interaction. Let's have a look at the second type of interaction. Now this second type of interaction is a scenario. Again, this is for my students who are building courses. And this is talking about a, a course plan and if it's required. Now the purpose of this is that I want to tell my students a course plan is required, but I need them to understand why and understand the importance and understand the negatives of not having one. So rather than just saying all of that in a video, I want them to see the outcomes in a scenario. And so this is the more cognitive side of the interactions. And this type of interaction is when the student is required to make decisions. And in this scenario, I provide them with options and each option they take will have a consequence. Now this is a very simple one, but you can create ones that are very complex, create ones with lots of different characters involved in them. Uh, but this is just purely a basic one to show you how I can build this in to Google Slides. Again, it's exactly the same. I've created all of my content here. And in my content here, each one has a button. And you can see that there's usually only two options, right? Not many options. You know, there might be three or four options usually in a scenario, but this one's straightforward. Now with these different scenarios, I have written out the entire scenario and every single possible path that my students can take. I wrote that out in a Google document first or any type of document you want to use. So I wrote the entire journey and then I built it into these slides here. When I built it in, this is in the logical sequence, but when the student has a look at this, so when the student goes in, they would see the first slide and they will click to continue to go to the next slide. They would read a little bit about the scenario and they will click to continue. Now they are forced to make a decision, one or the other. Whatever they click on, they get pushed to a different slide. So this is the, the different paths that they can choose. Okay, and they, as they've clicked on their option, they've then been taken through a path and they're getting immediate feedback about their decision. Now what's really good is if you can provide the student with an opportunity to redo the scenario, to go back and say, okay, well, now I understand my, my outcome, or now I understand the negative effects of my decision. Let me go back and have a look if I can make that decision again and see if I can have a different decision or a different outcome, right? And this is the whole process of this is that the students learning as they're going through the scenario, they're learning what to do and they're learning what not to do all by the feedback that's provided to them. When they click on a particular button, they get instant feedback. So think of this like it's a scenario, there's multiple options that they can choose and for each of those options, there's a consequence and attached to each of those consequences is a feedback. And so the student can get immediate feedback to their consequence. It might be a good consequence, it might be a negative consequence. And likewise, this is purely built by going in as you can see, I can select which slide I want to push to. So this next slide or the previous slide, or I can type in again, this is all in Spanish, sorry, but it's just like if I was to type in slide five, okay, you would do the same or you would write in the slide, whatever language you're using, but this is after or before, or you can type in to select a particular slide because we might be jumping to a different slide here, which is why I find it's so important first to write everything out and then do all of the interactions later. That is everything for today. I wanted to clearly demonstrate to you how you can create two different types of interactions. Remember, one is simply a click and reveal and the other one is more of a decision-making process that uses cognitive skills of your students. And 
the first one, the click and reveal, is used to provide the student with an opportunity to navigate your course how they wish. And the other one is used to provide them with the opportunity to learn from their consequences. Remember, each week I do put new videos up on this YouTube channel. So if you do have a particular video that you want to see, add them into the comments below. If you do have any questions about creating interactive activities, add them into the comments below. Each week I do put a new video here on YouTube to help you with course creation. So don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button so that you are notified. Until next week, happy course creating.